CapCam allows devices to be rapidly paired with no prior knowledge or configuration, offering bidirectional communication, position tracking, and innate multi-device support. Device pairing is explicit and targeted, requiring physical contact, which also impedes interception by malicious agents. CapCam takes advantage of conventional capacitive touchscreens and cameras, capabilities available in almost all consumer touch devices. It enables a touchscreen cap device to pair with a camera-enabled cam device. Most modern touchscreens can provide an image of the capacitive matrix. This image is typically used internally by the touch controller for tracking user touches. By accessing this image at a low level, we can also use it to recognize objects. For example, here we track fingers and smartphones. We can also estimate device size and orientation. Using this capacitive information, we can change the color of pixels underneath the device, and more specifically, underneath the device's camera. The screen encodes a packet of data as a flashing color pattern. We can render different color patterns under different areas to uniquely localize the camera. Here's what the camera on the cam device sees. The cam device decodes this color sequence, enabling simple data transfer from the screen to the camera. Here, we transmit an IP address and port and 32-bit passcode in roughly half a second, which allows the smartphone to securely connect to the large display without any prior knowledge. In this first simple application, the large touchscreen display provides a more comfortable keyboard for smaller devices. Here, we only need a one-way connection. Input characters are streamed to the device over a socket. Alternatively, the phone can be used to send data. When interacting with a large public display, instead of entering their password on a highly visible on-screen keyboard, a user could use their personal device to securely transmit login credentials. Because the CAP device knows the location of devices on its surface, it can transmit these coordinates to handheld devices, enabling spatially rare applications. As a simple demonstration, we created this Context Plus Focus app, where users can employ the smartphone as a high-resolution lens and toggle between different anatomical layers. Unlike Bluetooth or NFC transfer, CapCam interactions innately provide a spatial target. Here, a user wishing to copy a particular image can do so by pressing their phone's camera to the desired target. Because the Cap device knows the location of the phone's camera, only the correct item is sent. Bidirectional data transfer is also valuable. In this desktop example, users can drag files onto and off of their smartphones. For additional visual feedback, we also stream the icon and XY coordinates of files dragged near the phone providing real-time feedback of the drop destination. When the finger is lifted off, the file is securely transmitted over the wireless connection and saved to local storage. Handheld devices often feature other forms of output. For example, in this air hockey demo, in addition to using the screen for player-specific content, we also actuate the vibration motor when the puck is hit and output sound effects, such as puck collision and goal applause sounds. This provides localized spatial sound and individual haptic feedback. It also demonstrates multi-device interaction. Our approach supports as many devices as can physically fit on the screen. Phones can also serve as cap devices, enabling a range of phone-to-phone -phone applications. Here, a user displays a business card to a client, who can then make a copy by pressing their phone to the screen. Similarly, photos, URLs, apps, songs, and other media can be easily transmitted, again, with zero configuration required. We performed a data transmission experiment to assess the performance characteristics of our approach. We tested the transmission performance from three displays, a smartphone screen, a laptop screen, and a large touchscreen display. Our experiment sent over 5 million bits of data using a variety of encoding settings. From the received data, we measured the resulting raw bit errors, which in turn was used to compute the effective transmission rate. Our results indicate that, with a good display, we can transmit up to 150 bits per second with a 1% packet loss rate. Please see the paper for a more detailed analysis.